Okay, so all the prerequisite stuff now out of the way, let me introduce you to uh, the first numerical method uh, that I want to take a look at for computing eigenvalues, which is the QR algorithm, of course, leveraging our knowledge of the QR matrix decomposition. Again, I will leave a reference link in the description if you want to uh, know a little bit more about the QR matrix decomposition and how we can compute it uh, with some of those numerical methods. But anyways, we're just going to assume that we have some initial A matrix called A0, and we're going to decompose it with the R QR matrix decomposition. Then using Q0 and R0, we will compute a similar matrix, A1, using uh, R0 and Q0. Again, uh, this is kind of building off of uh, the matrix similarity that we discussed, along with uh, that little bit of information from the surety decomposition on how we can actually compute a similar matrix. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to compute another QR matrix decomposition, this time, though, of the first similar matrix, A1, which will give us Q1 and R1, and we can use those to compute A2. And hopefully you can see uh, where I'm going with this and what we're going to do, because uh, as you'll be able to see right here, A0, A1, A2, and as many of these similar matrices as we compute will all have the same eigenvalues, and that's really important. And so uh, very clearly, hopefully you can see that this can be generalized uh, so that we're going to, uh, you know, compute a QR matrix decomposition with this procedure. And then we're just going to compute a, a similar matrix uh, using, you know, RN and QN, and that will give us, you know, AN plus 1. And so the general idea here is going to be to use this general procedure here to keep on computing more and more and more iterations of similar matrices until we reach some an uh, similar matrix n being the number of iterations here where we will have something that's like upper triangular in nature uh, ideally we have all zeros below the diagonal but that's not really going to happen because again we're, de we're dealing with stuff that's uh, numerical in nature so we'll just have very small values or small epsilons below our diagonal but the important bit of this is that all of the eigenvalues uh will uh be along the diagonal. So as we compute more and more of these similar matrices, uh, it, each iteration of the, the next similar matrix will converge closer uh, to the actual value of the eigenvalues along the diagonal. And on the point of there being like small epsilons or, or things that are not perfectly zero below the diagonal, when we're dealing with numerical mathematics, you never really are going to compute the eigenvalues perfectly, okay? Instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to establish some sort of threshold to the degree of precision we want to compute these eigenvalues to. And so with some code, uh, we're going to make use of this make similar function that I've created here a lot. We're just going to use the NumPy Linalge QR function, uh, you know, to compute uh, a QR matrix decomposition for some given A matrix, and then we're just going to compute the matrix product RQ, and then return uh, that similar matrix. Then to actually demonstrate this method, we're going to use this eigqr function. You can see the first thing that we're doing is we're computing a similar matrix for our, our original A matrix. We're keeping track of our total number of iterations. This L eig value we're setting to be uh, the last eigenvalue along our diagonal of each similar matrix. This is just going to be the first similar matrix up here. Um, but later on in the while loop, you can see that we're resetting that to uh, the last value of every single similar matrix. And that's going to be very important uh, when computing the difference. And so this diff variable here is just going to be, uh, you know, to keep track of the differences between one, the last eigenvalue from one iteration uh, to the next. And so we're going to keep on generating more and more similar matrices until the difference between that last eigenvalue from one iteration to the next is uh, less than an order of 1 times 10 to the minus 32, or an order of 10 to the minus 32, simply because that's the level of precision that I've just chosen here. Again, when it comes to doing any type of numerical mathematics, you're going to need to establish for yourself what degree of precision or to what degree of error you're comfortable with. In this example, I'm comfortable with things on order of 10 to the minus 32 uh, precision. That might not be enough for you. That might be overkill for you. Um, because we're never going to get anything perfectly, it's going to be up to you to figure out uh, what those constraints are. And so in this while loop, we're very much so just doing the same thing. We're computing a similar matrix uh, based off of matrix uh, B. 
we're bumping our iterations by one, so we're just going to count out all our iterations so we can compare all these methods to one another. Um, then we're computing a difference between that last eigenvalue versus uh, the eigenvalue in this uh, most recent uh, iteration, and then we're going to reset that uh, last eigenvalue so that we can compute the difference next time, and so we can constantly just keep up with the difference between uh, one iteration to the next. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're just going to strip all the values off of our diagonal. That's going to be our eigenvalues. And we're going to return our eigenvalues and the total number of iterations. You can see then uh, all the rest of this is just set up for what we're going to see in the terminal. And so this is what we end up getting. You can see after 192 iterations, this is uh, the 192nd similar matrix. Very small values. As you, they're, they're, as you can see, there are very small values along, uh, below the diagonal here. But if we go down to our eigenvalues, you can see that uh, they're uh, very precise. Uh, it doesn't actually show that they're on order of 10 to the minus 32 precision. But after 192 iterations, they are there. And these are, of course, for that original A matrix, which going back to uh, just using the NumPy Linalg eig function produced and the QR algorithm that uh, we've created here and uh, just ran is, is producing that as well. But 192 iterations is quite a bit computationally intensive, and so there's actually a way for us to speed up the QR algorithm, and that will be the next method that uh, we discuss.